Θα ήθελα όμως πρώτα, πριν συνεχίσουμε τη συζήτηση, να παρακολουθήσουμε μια πάρα πολύ ενδιαφέρουσα συνέντευξη που μας έδωσε ο Διφεντής του Ευρωπαϊκού Τμήματος του London School of Economics, ενός πανεπιστημίου διάσημου στο Λονδίνο, από το οποίο έχουν βγει και πάρα πολλοί υπουργοί οικονομικών της Ελλάδας, που αυτό δεν ξέρουμε αν είναι καλό ή κακό στην προκειμένη περίπτωση. Και ένας άνθρωπος που είναι φιλέλληνας, γνωρίζει ελληνικά, η συνέντευξη έγινε όμως αγγλικά, είναι ο διευθυντής του ελληνικού προγράμματος στο LSE, των ελληνικών σπουδών, ο Κέβιν Φέδερστον. Και νομίζω ακούγοντα κάποιο αυτή τη συνέντευξη θα καταλάβει ακριβώς τι συμβαίνει αυτή τη στιγμή στην Βρετανία, τι συμβαίνει στην Ευρώπη και τι θα συμβεί από εδώ και πέρα. Πάμε παρακολουθήσουμε τη συνέντευξη. What do you think a Brexit might mean for the UK? Brexit, I think, uh, economically, most economists argue that uh, we would take a major hit in the short and the medium term. There are relatively few economists who argue that uh, Brexit would be good for the economy. What do you think will um, happen? What is your uh, hint? I think my gut feeling is that the momentum of the campaign has started to go uh, towards Brexit. Uh, there are two reasons for thinking this. One, that the opinion polls are suggesting that direction. Uh, and the other is that there's something in the flavour of the campaign, the colour of the campaign, which seems to give more energy, more colour to the Brexit um, leaders. I think part of the problem here, uh, Sophia, is that the um, the Remain campaign is dominated by the images of the Prime Minister and the Chancellor of the Exchequer, David Cameron and George Osborne. And so for some voters at least, the Remain campaign seems to be a matter of whether you're for or against David Cameron. So even if the economies are warning against Brexit, how come the people really believe that that's what, what they want? You're right, it's a very fascinating phenomenon, and I can't recall any previous uh, parallel. I think what we have, it's rather like Donald Trump in the United States. I think this is our Donald Trump moment. It's a popular feeling that uh, we shouldn't trust uh, the elites, we shouldn't trust leaders, uh, we shouldn't trust institutions that are advising us on the economy. For one thing, what they're telling us are forecasts, models, with various assumptions. And who knows, they got it wrong with the financial crisis, who knows, they might have it wrong on this occasion. But it's very interesting in terms of the campaign that the Brexit campaign has been able to say to people in a very populist, rather demagogic way, don't trust them, they're trying to trick you, don't believe them. We can get a better deal from Europe. We can get a better deal from Angela Merkel. And just think of your own common sense. Do you think that there is chance that Britain will be better off if they are outside the European Union? In economic terms, it's very difficult to make that uh, proposal. You might say that in the longer term, then um, Britain would be able to uh, develop some new economic sectors uh, away from the competition of the European Union. But that's, um, I think the strongest arguments for Brexit are nothing to do with economics, they're to do with identity, who we are, and questions of sovereignty. A popular phrase is, we want to govern ourselves. It's that kind of emotion, identity, which motivates people rather than the economics. What would a Brexit mean for the rest of Europe mm. or for the rest of the world? I think Brexit would be that game-changing moment. So far in Europe's history, we've assumed that exit on a voluntary or compulsory basis is taboo. We've assumed that we, can, we would all remain in the club. I think the risk is of greater fragmentation. And I think it would be important for your viewers to appreciate that, yes, there is a particular British problem, but if we think of Europe more generally, we think of uh, attitudes in Denmark. It's 
very likely that Denmark would wish to have their own referendum after a Brexit. Uh, opinion polls show that in Italy, Italy, public support for the European Union is at an all-time low. In France next year, Marine Le Pen will be fighting the presidential elections and she, I'm sure, would take a Brexit as a boost to her kind of agenda. And the European Union doesn't have a good history of referendum votes. We can both quote many cases in which referendums in different European countries have gone against the European cause. So I think actually the big picture here, the message, is that Europe has a problem in terms of losing the emotional attachments, the commitments, the popular attachments to the idea of building Europe. What the European Union has done wrong the last year in order for all those people to judge and not feel comfortable in the Union? Step by step we've seen more divergence between the opinions of leaders and elites and what the ordinary voters are actually thinking. Okay, in difficult economic times, this is challenging uh, in general. But I think we've we've failed to sell Europe. We've failed to give the the sound bites. We've failed to give the headlines, which would make people realise the importance of the European Union in their everyday daily lives. Uh, we've relied on some kind of economic headline. Uh, it's good for jobs, etc. But people in difficult times become disengaged and confused by uh, the European Union. Uh, so I think we need to find a new popular appeal, uh, Europe of the heart as well as Europe of the head, to try to keep the, the commitments. Never before have we found a, uh, a synonym between austerity and Europe. It's divisive. And at the same time, we're not actually making Europe seem relevant to everyone's daily lives. And even the fact that the crisis in Greece, has that affected their, their yes. Way of thinking? Yes, 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 it has. Um, people in Britain, on the whole, have a lot of sympathy for uh, what has happened to Greece in the Eurozone crisis uh, for many different reasons. Of course, you might say that it's easy for the British to feel sympathetic to Greece because we're outside the Eurozone, we're not being asked to pay money to Greece. But Greece is often mentioned as a country which shows the nasty side of the European Union. Uh, and would we wish to be part of this uh, nasty, severe economic uh, policy? So uh, Greece is, uh, is referred to as um, evidence that our European partners aren't quite as nice as they look. But do you think it's possible that we will see the end of the European Union or do you, if it's possible to see any turmoil happening in Europe in the next decades? If Britain votes on Thursday to come out of the European uh, Union, then we'll have a short-term period of chaos, instability and crisis. We will be waking in Britain to financial markets in Singapore, Hong Kong, Tokyo and then gradually around the world um, being very worried and taking uh, necessary actions on the prospect of, of Brexit. We would then have the resignation of David Cameron very soon after a Brexit vote. Uh, it would require his party to choose a new leader, which will take weeks at least. And then on Tuesday the 28th we have a European Council meeting specially convened to discuss the implications of the British uh, referendum. In this situation, Europe would be wondering what on earth Britain is going to ask for. And in the short term, it's not clear what a Brexit government would actually demand because the Brexit campaign have been arguing many different things. The precise meaning of Brexit, does this mean that we would have a relationship like uh, Norway to the single market? Would we be entirely out? These things are unclear, but in the longer term we might have a smaller European Union 
but a European Union which uh, eventually um, agrees to deepen its integration. And when you say smaller, how many countries do you mean? Probably a majority of the present uh, European Union, but we may get into a situation in which uh, a multi-speed Europe or different types of membership would be uh, very much the norm. Uh, we could certainly conceive of a Eurozone, possibly not as large as the current Eurozone, uh, being the centre, being the core, and then the rest having different kinds of uh, lesser membership. That's not good for Europe, it's not good for Europe economically, politically it's uncertain, and it would be a reflection of um, lack of confidence in the future. And where does Greece stand on all this? How do you think Brexit and all the situation you described will affect Greece? I think the risk of Brexit is that it makes the idea of exiting the European Union less of a taboo. Uh, of course we hope in the present situation that Greece is on a better path, that it will remain in the Eurozone and a full member of the European Union. The fact of a, of a Brexit, of Britain having withdrawn, I think would break the sensitivity that no one can leave and I think uh, the risks are Grexit would be more likely in the event of a new crisis simply because uh, of a British referendum. If you believe in Greece being part of the Eurozone and a full member of the European Union, uh, then perhaps you should join me in praying on the 23rd of June that Britain will be voting to stay in the European Union. So that, that was my next, uh, you know what you're going to vote? Uh, actually, Sophia, I've already voted because you can vote by post. And so before, before coming to Greece, I made sure that my vote was in the, the post, and perhaps you can guess how I voted. Απλώς ήθελα να προσθέσω ότι όταν τον συνάντησα, για να δούμε πώς λειτουργεί και ένα Βρετανικό Πανεπιστήμιο και πώς λειτουργεί μια άλλη χώρα, μου έδωσε και ένα φυλάδιο μεγάλο, την έρευνα που είχε κάνει τον Λόντος Κολοβικονόμης στο Πανεπιστήμιό του, για το τι θα σημαίνει ένα Brexit για την Βρετανία.